Hello, everyone. We're going to get started as our panel and our attendees are rolling in. Good evening to everyone and good morning for our individuals joining us in Australia. My name is Harana Adisu and I am the Advocacy Officer for Freedom United and your host for this evening. I would like to first um, thank our attendees and our speakers for making the time to be here for World Day Against Traffickings of Person. We'll now be starting off with short briefings from each of our speakers accompanied with a petition hand in and a short Q&A. Freedom United represents the world's largest community dedicated to ending human trafficking and contemporary forms of modern day slavery. We equipped millions of supporters with awareness, education, and ways to take action to drive real change. Today, we are here to focus on Australia renewing their international commitments to eradicating modern day slavery. Freedom United, forced labor is one of the most common forms of modern day slavery, and it heavily impacts migrants, children, women, and those who come from low economic backgrounds. Estimates from the ILO place the number of victims of forced labor globally at 25 million. Forced labor continues to be an issue due to the lack of protections in place by governments to protect those who are the most vulnerable within our community and survivors of modern day slavery. Migrants and other high risk groups that often lack the necessary information to seek left are oftentimes forgotten and do not get the proper resources to help themselves. While employers and legal officials lack the informa information to recognize forced labor, they do not have the ad adequate protections in place to protect those in need. On both sides, there's inefficient education on the issue of forced labor and human trafficking. This creates opportunities for perpetrators to continue to exploit people unnoticed and unchallenged. This issue has become greater due to COVID-19. The lockdown and measures taken to contain the virus has left victims of human trafficking with limited resources and, left, and they have been left in the dark. The first step in tackling forced labor is making sure that governments have the right laws in place to protect all persons. Since 2014, Freedom United has been part of the ILO's 50 to Freedom campaign, a campaign dedicated to ensuring 50 member states ratify the forced labor convention and protocol. Supplementing Convention 29 of 1930, P29 is a legally binding instrument that requires countries to adopt measures in areas of prevention, protection of victims, ensuring their access to justice and remedies. This advancement in international law holds governments accountable in making sure that individuals can get the access and the support they need regardless of their immigration status. It also requires countries to create domestic regulation to ensure employers are not exploiting their workers. And it also holds governments accountable in educating employers and country officials on the issue of forced labor. Today, we urge the Australian government to take this, this step forward towards change by ratifying P29. Thank you. I'll switch over to our colleague, Carolyn Keto from Be Slavery Free. Whoops, we'll get the unmute off. Um, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, okay, great. Uh, thank you, Harana, and it's always um, a huge privilege and also a lot of fun to work with Freedom United on bringing uh, to fruition some of these really important uh, changes. I wanna begin by, uh, for Australians in particular and for all people in the world who live on the lands of indigenous people, I want to acknowledge um, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people on whose land we live. We thank you, we thank them for their custodial care of the land, and we offer our recognition to their elders, past, present, and future. This protocol is important. The ILO says it's important enough that it's one of the eight foundational documents. And of course, since it was first of all introduced in 1930, the place of work has changed a lot. In fact, in the last six months, it's changed a lot even more. But we're um, incredibly grateful to Ambassador Fifield for, um, for being willing to accept this petition. It has nearly 13,000 Australian names on it, as well as over 100,000 worldwide. And what this does is it, it enables us to have a way of speaking um, 
specifically and directively directly to the governments of Australia. And I say governments because uh, <laughs> We're a federation, and when you start to work on these things, you actually realise that it's not just the uh, Commonwealth that needs to work on things, but it's also the states and territories who, who need to align their laws. For some time, Australia has had a um, national action plan through um, the Department of Home Affairs. It is now operated domestically, and we're delighted that the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is also in the process of developing a national action plan as required under this protocol. We look forward to there being regulation in Australia of labour hire agents, as we know that this is one of the key ways in which exploitation happens. And for many years, um, NGOs and activists and those who provide services to victims have looked for compensation to be able to be part of what is offered for the journey for recovery for those victims. Victims' compensation in Australia is based in the states. Uh, it's under state law. And so we hope that this will lead to us having some more um, focus on what we can actually do in the Commonwealth and we can do together. So we're grateful for this opportunity. We're grateful to every person that signed this petition and you can keep on signing. Um, and uh, we, uh, we look forward to this being ratified, hopefully before the end of this year by the Australian government. So I will hand over now to my colleague and friend, uh, Professor Jennifer Byrne. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today to take part with you in this very positive initiative. And on behalf of Anti-Slavery Australia at the University of Technology, Sydney, I wholeheartedly welcome this initiative. And I thank Be Slavery Free and Freedom United for, for initiating this petition to be delivered to Australia's ambassador to the UN, Ambassador Fryfield, very soon. Uh, Anti-Slavery Australia represents victims and survivors of all forms of modern slavery, including forced labour. And we have done that for over 17 years, providing free and confidential legal advice to victims and survivors. And as I speak with you today, I remember hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of men, women and children that we have represented through the work we do at Anti-Slavery Australia, navigating through many and complex legal processes, uh, achieving protection, but seeking to do much more. Men, women and children are cruelly exploited in the Australian context, and as we've heard from Harana around the world. At Anti-Slavery Australia, we have one aim, and that is to abolish all forms of modern slavery, including forced labour. And the forced labour protocol will help us do that. The protocol affirms an internationally recognised definition of coerced and involuntary labour. And I encourage governments to do what is necessary to swiftly ratify the protocol. It sets out a framework for action to prevent forced labour and provide victims with protection and access to remedies. And as Carolyn said, the issue of a national compensation scheme in Australia is critical. And that is something that Anti-Slavery Australia with partner organisations like Be Slavery Pre has been working on for some time, but it is absolutely critical. So we welcome the initiative. And if we can get this done, victims will be better identified protected and supported. I now call on Ambassador Mitch Farfield. Ambassador. Well, thanks very much, uh, Jennifer. And uh, can I begin by uh, acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land uh, from uh, where each of us are participating today? It's, uh, it's good uh, to pause uh, and to uh, reflect uh, on those who've trod the ground before us and those who will do so after us. Uh, can I uh, recognise uh, the great work uh, of uh, the organisations that represented uh, here on this call today and do that through uh, Jennifer from uh, Anti-Slavery Australia, uh, Carolyn 
uh, from uh, Be Slavery Free, uh, and Harana from uh, Freedom United. Um, I'd also like to uh, particularly acknowledge the contribution and presence virtually today of some significant individuals, uh, those who have survived slavery, uh, those who have survived trafficking, uh, and those uh, who have been through those ordeals, uh, but who um, are working today to help to address uh, these terrible, terrible crimes. So um, uh, welcome to you particularly. Um, well, it's great to be uh, with you all uh, on World Day Against uh, Trafficking in Persons, uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to provide uh, an update, um, an update on Australia's efforts to fight uh, against uh, human trafficking, uh, modern slavery, forced labour. Uh, we do meet in unprecedented times. Uh, COVID-19 is having a, a severe impact uh, on at-risk populations worldwide, uh, including uh, victims of trafficking and slavery. Uh, this has only increased the urgency of uh, our work to combat these crimes. Australia, for its part, uh, really recognises that uh, a coordinated approach, uh, working with partners in the public and private sectors uh, at the domestic, regional and global level, uh, is essential uh, if we are to successfully address these challenges. Uh, and I'm pleased to, to speak to you today uh, about the national approaches that uh, we're taking uh, in Australia. Uh, domestically, uh, Australia's Modern Slavery Act came into effect last year. Uh, it requires more than 3,000 of our largest businesses and entities uh, to report annually on modern slavery risks in their supply chains. Uh, and in a world first, uh, the Australian government, uh, as one of the largest purchasers uh, in our economy, uh, intends to lead the way uh, by publishing its own annual statement on slavery risks uh, in public investments and supply chains. Uh, the Act requires uh, entities with an annual revenue of more than 100 million Australian dollars, uh, which is about 70 million US dollars, to submit a modern slavery statement. Uh, and the statement must address a range of criteria. Uh, the Australian government maintains a central register of all of these statements. Uh, and the system supports businesses to respond to modern slavery by increasing the information available to consumers and investors. Uh, it provides a practical risk-based framework for transparency. Uh, it increases awareness of modern slavery. Uh, it reduces modern slavery risks. Uh, and it drives a, a business race to the top uh, to improve workplace standards and practices. And in another world first, uh, the Australian government will publish all statements on a searchable online register. And rather than deploying formal penalties, the reporting requirements are based on using reputational risk uh, and market and consumer pressure to drive compliance. Uh, this approach aims to address the likely reasons for non-compliance, such as uh, lack of awareness uh, and lack of uh, ability to comply. Uh, these issues are uh, better addressed by providing support to business. And to provide this support, the Australian government has established uh, the Modern Slavery Business Engagement Unit. This unit will provide advice to business and deliver training and uh, awareness raising activities as well as uh, administering the central register. In recognition that uh, we'll need to learn and adapt, uh, the government will review the Act after three years. Uh, I should also mention that uh, Australia is uh, committed to tackling modern slavery through effective implementation of international labour standards, in particular uh, forced and child labour. Uh, this uh, brings me to uh, the important uh, ILO forced labour protocol, uh, the subject of uh, today's petition. Uh, Australia has already ratified the ILO's forced labour convention 1930 uh, and the abolition of forced labour convention uh, 1957. Australia is uh, currently progressing ratification of uh, the forced labour protocol. Uh, and following uh, the entry into force of the Modern Slavery Act last year, uh, only one hurdle to ratification remains in Australia uh, at the state level in Western Australia. Uh, and I'm very pleased to uh, confirm uh, that the government of Western Australia recently introduced legislation to the state parliament 
which includes amendments designed to bring state industrial relations law into compliance with the protocol. Um, friends, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has made our work more difficult, uh, but more necessary. Uh, can I commend the work uh, of uh, everyone who's joining us virtually today, uh, who work tirelessly, uh, ceaselessly to eradicate modern slavery, uh, human trafficking and forced labour. Uh, and I'm pleased to report uh, that Australia has taken significant steps uh, to progress ratification of the forced labour protocol. Thanks indeed. Thank you, Ambassador Fifield, and for the rest of our panelists as well for giving a quick briefing. Um, as, as we mentioned before, as the largest community dedicated to um, eradicating and ending human trafficking and modern day slavery, we work hand in hand with our supporters and making sure that their voices are being heard with our, within our movement. And one way we're able to do that is through our global petition that we've been speaking about that's being signed by our global audience, but also by signatures that are coming in within Australia calling on the government to ratify P29. Um, Currently now, only 45 countries have ratified Protocol 29, and it's not even half of the ILO member states that are currently um, within the ILO. Um, as we mentioned before, and Ambassador, you just spoke a little bit, Australia has started their process to uh, ratifying P29, but currently it is um, being held up within um, one of the legislative bodies in Western Australia. So today on World Day Against Traffickings of Person, we would like to present to you um, our petition to, to show in line that mission to the UN and to show your commitment and your solidarity to end modern day slavery. And we'd like to move it over to you to see if you would like to accept our call to action. Very, uh, very happy to accept your call to action. Perfect. Um, we have a petition sent over to you and it would be great if our audience members could also see the symbolism of you accepting our petition and call to action. Certainly. Thank you, Verena. Um. I would like us to move on to um, wrap up this event. Thank you, everybody that has been able to attend this webinar and this petition hand in. I'd like to thank our colleagues in Australia. I know it's early on that side. And of course, Ambassador uh, Fifield for accepting our petition. We hope by accepting this petition, we could get some movements um, and moving forward to eradicating modern day slavery and forced labor and emphasizing the need to move forward this due to the impacts of COVID-19 and its um, impact within our community, within human trafficking and the victims and survivors. So I wanna thank everybody for being here and um, for our colleagues who are joining us from New York, have a good evening. For our colleagues in Australia, good morning. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy the rest of um, your day as well. Terrific. Thank you. Bye, everyone.